Merry Christmas. Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. <laughs> and yes, it's that time of the year. We're in the month of December and we're in the Christmas season. Listen, not the holiday season. All right. Uh, but the Christmas season, and I'm going to talk to you about it uh, when, uh, uh, as we progress into the Christmas season because uh, I'm excited about this time of the year. I must admit, it's not like it used to be. Some of my, some of my most fond Chris, Christmas memories were, were from years ago uh, with my children, and uh, we're getting up early on Sunday mornings, going to the 7 a.m. Uh, service service, a 7 a.m. ministers and training class. During that time, I was doing a 7 a.m., uh, 8 a.m., and then we would do our 11 a.m. Sunday morning service, and uh, uh, Crystal and Patrick uh, would be in the car with me. We'd stop and get some breakfast and sing Christmas carols. And everywhere you look, you see Merry Christmas, and people would be excited, and some knucklehead decided that the word Christmas is an offense. And look at what corporate America and the world is doing today. Oh, they've been over backwards not to say the word Christmas. They will show people uh, buying gifts. They will show they will they will play Christmas music in some commercials. They've changed the lyrics and, and different things like that. But they they've been over backwards. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to the commercials. And you'll see how most of them, not all, but the overwhelming majority, like 98 percent, been over backwards not to use that word. This is the season of joy. Uh, this is the the winter sale. The, but but you're showing Christmas colors. And I tell you what you want. You want those Christmas dollars. I've been saying this, and I've been saying this, and I've been saying this, and I will continue to say it. If the born again, if the, the born again, those who are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, if the evangelicals, if the saints of God everywhere, if the saints of God just in this country alone would for just one Christmas decide, you marketers, you marketers, you business owners, if you are not going to even acknowledge that it is Christmas, if you are, if you think the word Christmas is an offensive term, well, you're not going to get my Christmas money. It wouldn't take but one Christmas if we did that, if, if the saints would do it. And you know what? These, these business people will begin to say to us, Merry Christmas the next year in July. I mean, you'd get tired of hearing Merry Christmas because, see, they want your money, but they don't want to represent, they don't want to say anything about our Lord. Christmas means a gathering in the name of Christ. And as born again believers, we do not celebrate the seasons. We do not celebrate the holidays. We celebrate the birth of Christ, the birth of Christ, joy to the world. There's, amen. We want everybody to know that Jesus Christ has come. Praise the Lord. Joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Joy to the world. Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain. I'm telling you, I'm all in the spirit, so I'm excited about that. And you know, there are so many things going on, and you know, I, I got to talk fast because I'm here to invite you to come tonight for Bible study, but I just saw something the other day that I can't pass on. I don't understand why Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are somehow or another uh, calling the Mississippi law that saves babies. It's a, it's a save the life of human beings that the Supreme Court is hearing and that they're going to decide. And among the objections uh, that uh, uh, Pelosi and the Democrats have, they say further revisiting or undermining role presents a clear threat to equality and justice in America as the Mississippi ban particularly targets women of color and women in low income communities. Okay, so how does saving a life, saving a baby, adversely uh, target women of color? And, 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 and I would like to know, Speaker Pelosi, why did race come into this? Are you saying that you want to make sure that women of color and black women 
and low-income women exterminate their children? How about those famous grandkids of yours and great-grandkids who have the best soul? Should they live? And the low-income kids get exterminated? You know, I'm telling you, I want to say to my African-American friends who are watching, those of you whose color is just like mine, don't you let these people uh, toy with your mind. These are wicked people. These are wicked people, and they are for the extermination of our race, and no one is as racist as white leftists, people who are uh, 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 of the thinking and the ideologies uh, of uh, the ideas of that wicked woman, Margaret Sanger. She was the devil almost incarnate, and uh, she said that she called black folk human weed. Uh, she said we didn't have a right to be born. Uh, she said things like uh, we can't let the word get out that the purpose of, uh, of Planned Parenthood is the extermination of the Negro race. And if any of those Negroes seem to be a little ornery or if we find out what the problem, what's really going on and we say something, Margaret said we will use, she will use the Negro minister to silence him. Well, I tell you what, Negro minister, she has certainly used a whole lot of us, but he's not, she's not going to use me. I'm sounding the alarm. I'm, I'm on the side of life. Since when have the solution to poverty been the extermination of the poor? Since when have that been the case? Since when do we celebrate killing children simply because mom uh, uh, was poor or dad wasn't there or, 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 or things like that? So we want to make sure we want to make sure that in Mississippi and other areas, we want to make sure that women of color and uh, as one uh, Georgia legislator <laughs> said, uh, that we have reproductive justice. So we call it, we're now calling the right to kill our own. Because every time you abort a child, you abort a generation. We're calling the right to exterminate our own, our own reproductive justice. Now, you know, that makes no sense whatsoever. That is the work of the devil. And my friends, we've got to say something about it. Oh, and uh, uh, before I invite you to church tonight, I want to give you some headlines. I mean, this, I, I want, I want to, I want to tell you something. It's, uh, I hope you're sitting down. If you're not sitting, sit down, sit down. You sit. WRAL chose to, to, uh, 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 to report this. There is a church downtown Durham. There is a church, a church. Do you hear me? A church in Durham. I want to read the headlines. There's a church in Durham. Church opposing same-sex marriage opens in progressive Durham community. <laughs> Ah, it's amazing that they use the word progressive. So, uh, and I guess that's, you know, they, they call themselves progressives. I call them big time sinners and, and scripture deniers, Bible deniers. Uh, now, I tell you what, now this church is being attacked. A new church will soon open in downtown Durham, but many of the community, many in the community are upset because of the pastor's stance on same sex marriage. Oh, the pastor, Cherie Jackson, Cherie Lopez Jackson, a 32-year-old pastor of Pioneers Church. And she said she won't marry people in the LGBTQ community, but that she's determined for her church to be a good and all-inclusive neighbor. Now... If I was a pastor in Durham County, if I were, I would call WRAL and say, me too. Is this the only church in Durham downtown that opposes same-sex marriage? You mean to tell me a church that opposes same-sex marriage is a news story? Now, I didn't say a club. I, I did not say a fraternity or a sorority or the Masons or the Eastern Stars. I didn't say a ball club or a team. I said a church. 
church. When you think church, you think Bible, you think scripture. Well, the God of the Bible opposes same-sex marriage. The God of the Bible uh, made marriage for man and for male and female, for a man and a woman. So it's news today that a church would oppose same-sex marriage. Oh, if I was a Durham pastor, I'd be so embarrassed. I would call, I would call W-R-A-L. I would knock their door down and say, include my church in that story. We oppose it too because we come down on the side of the scripture and we can't find anywhere in scripture where God allowed a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a woman. And the Supreme Court of, of our country can make it legal, but they can't make it right. That's what I would do if I was a Durham pastor, unless, scrap, unless you guys agree with same-sex marriage. And if you do, I want to know when and what happened to you. And also call me and tell me when God changed his mind. Because as far as I can tell, looking in the Bible, the word of God hadn't changed at all. What God said, he's, the Bible says he's the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says that God's word is settled forever in heaven. So as far as I know, the Bible has not changed. Pastor. So you ought to, you ought to call W-R-A-L. And the last thing, because I want to invite you to church, but I want to say this. When President Trump, remember him? When he put in the travel ban from China, dealing with the China virus that originated out of a, a lab in Wuhan, China. No one's disputing that now. He was called xenophobic, racist. I mean, he was called all kinds of names uh, by then candidate Joe Biden. As a matter of fact, candidate Biden said that the travel ban wouldn't work and uh, said that uh, President Trump is being racist. All right, now President Joe Biden has put in restrictions that apply to South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Nambia, and several African countries, uh, Mozambique, and at least seven or eight African countries because of this new variant that is out Omicron, Omicron, sound like, sound like a comic book character, Omicron. So Omicron has caused President Biden to put in a, a travel ban against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight African countries, eight nations can't travel to the United States, but Omicron was in the Netherlands first. Anybody heard of a Netherlands ban? Is that a travel ban anywhere else? Now, my, my, my question is, uh, uh, what is it about these uh, African countries that would cause you to put a travel ban in and, uh, and you, didn't, you didn't put a ban in against the Netherlands? And so there's no European ban, you know, uh, and all that, you know, that, that, uh, not the immediate thing. If far be it for me to cry race, you know, I'm not a race peddler, but these are African nations. So uh, for my brothers and sisters who look like me, who support uh, President uh, Biden, uh, I think you ought to try to reach out to him and just ask him, hey, man. Mr. President, what's what's up with this? Uh, and uh, at least be fair. And by the way, if we're that concerned about Omicron, the Delta variant, and all of the other COVID-19 stuff that's going on, and if you're going to reinstate, you know, wear the mask and all that, I, you know what? I have no problem with that. But I, I, I want to know why. You won't close the southern border, though. Now, they can't come in from Africa at all, and they can't come into our country from other areas unless they've been tested or whatever. But if you go to the southern border, you just walk in, and they'll fly you to the interior of the, of the country, and nobody checks anything. 
Now, does that make sense to anyone out there? It doesn't make sense to me. Now, I've gone long and, and sometimes pray for me. I, I tend to do that. But there's so many things going on. And um, uh, I do have thoughts on these things. I do have opinions of, about them. And, uh, and I love sharing them with you. And uh, just pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But tonight, tonight, uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking about a weapon. I'm going to be talking about a weapon that every one of us have got to employ. Oh my, to, to discard it, to disregard it is to discard divine power. And if there's anything we need today to keep our minds sane and to keep joy in our hearts and to, to keep us uh, uh, free from hate and, and, and walking in the glory of God, we need this thing that I'm going to be talking to you about tonight. And uh, so I want you to join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, whether you join me in person or online, I want you to join because we are going to have Bible study. <laughs> That's right. Bible study. Tonight, we are going to study the word of the Lord together. Somebody asked me once, and I'm going, I'm going. Wouldn't, but why you talk about all those current events and why you bring those things up and, uh, and all that kind of stuff? Well, when you, when you study the Bible, you find out that the current events aren't so current because God said they were going to happen a long time ago. <laughs> and so when you see the Bible being fulfilled, you have no choice but to talk about it. So join me tonight. I love you. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.